Thank you for joining us. You're just in time for having a drink with Mink Goes Outside. That's right. Today, we're taking our toys outside. We're going to do a little bit of photography out in Shirley Park. So, uh, hey, stick around. It's a quick jaunt through downtown. Gonna hop on a bus, and then before we know it, we will be in Oakland. I'll see you there. And here it is, the historic Cathedral of Learning. We have arrived in Oakland. Beautiful spring day. And a fine afternoon to take some photographs. Right here we have our dinosaur ambassador. And he's pointing the way to the park. This is the Carnegie Library of Oakland. Fine establishment in its own right park is back through that way so off we go and here we are in Shenley Park that's right it's been quite the journey turning out to be a warm one in the city today over there you can see Flagstaff Hill down that way is Oakland and there's the Cathedral of Learning from a different angle. And then that right there, Phipps Conservatory. Used to actually work there at one point in time. Boy, don't miss that. Gotta say, much happier to comic book shop. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk down those steps and descend into the park, and that is when the fun really begins.
torches come out, well, it's clear that these two simply aren't going to shake hands and make peace. And besides, there are a lot of people in the park at this point, so I decided it's time to wrap things up. It turns out that taking your toys outside is a pleasant and productive way of spending an afternoon. It's getting the most out of your hobby dollar while scratching that creative urge to boot. Be it in a tropical hotspot over summer vacation or just that overgrown lot down the street when there's nothing better to do, taking pictures of your favorite collectibles is downright fun, and that's something that we can all use more of in our lives. Just be careful who you take with you, as they might get ornery. As a gesture of peace, I decided to take the two combatants out for a succulent Chinese meal, and we headed back to Oakland. Now, how the heck do we get out of here? And on our way back into Oakland, we walk past the Decade. Opened on October 22, 1973, the Decade quickly became one of Pittsburgh's most well-regarded nightclubs. In addition to featuring legendary local bands like King Solomon and the Iron City House Rockers, the Decade became a national showcase, offering the stage to up-and-coming groups like the Ramones, U2, and the Police. Here's the police's drummer, Stuart Copeland, wearing a Decade t-shirt in the video for the band's popular song, Message in a Bottle. Stevie Ray Vaughan was paid a paltry $500 to play there, and was probably happy to get it, while Bruce Springsteen sat in for free. Sadly, the glory days of the Decade are long behind it, and the building is unfortunately condemned, another victim to the grinding wheel of time. And hell, you know, since it is having a drink with Mink, well, let's make it a point to get ourselves something to drink. Okay, and we are back in the studio, absolutely, and I gotta say, for one, I'm glad to be here, you know, tromping around on location, taking pictures, well, uh, ain't as young as I used to be, that's for sure, and uh, granted, Shenley Park is no Central American uh, rainforest, but still, the chances of turning an ankle or, you know, falling down a hill pretty good. So glad to be back here, have a nice beverage on hand. Obviously couldn't have one there. You can't drink in the park, people. Come on, have a little class. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Predator. Predator was a 1987 sci-fi action film starring Arnold Schwarzenegger as Dutch Schaefer, leader of an elite paramilitary rescue team deployed to the Central American rainforest. There, Schaefer and his team encounter the otherworldly Predator, an alien hunter who systematically begins killing the veteran soldiers one by one until only it and Schaefer remain. Now, this was a favorite of mine as an 18-year-old because, uh, well, that's about right when it hit cable and it seemed like the thing was on constantly. So, uh, you know, we were always tuning in, thrilling to the adventures of uh, Arnie and company, you know, Jake Ventura, Carl Weathers, fantastic cast, you know, brilliant script. I mean, the movie, well, it's got it all, doesn't it? Now, NECA acquired the license to Predator in 2010, but it took them two whole years to get around to issuing a Dutch Schaefer figure. And when they did, well, it was insanely popular. I think they did three different versions of this particular uh, figure, all slightly different. Like I said, I never saw him. I always saw the Predator, and I thought, what's the point of having a Predator unless I have a Dutch? Happily, in 2017, time to coincide with the Predator's 30th anniversary, NECA re-released these figures. And that's where I picked up my Arnie and these two particular Predators. And um, I gotta say, while the original 
NECA figures were plagued by some quality control issues. These were great. Uh, yeah, I had to uh, dunk a couple limbs in some hot water just to loosen them up. I didn't want anything to break on me down in the woods. I took some glue along just in case, but had absolutely no problems. Uh, all of these figures were able to... Um, attain and hold poses very very well you know i'm starting to get a little bit of looseness in some of them especially at the ankles which is always a tricky point especially with migos you know the bigger the figure the weaker the ankles that is for sure get that on a t-shirt but uh, it was a lot of fun to take these guys down into the woods. I had a blast, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Something slightly off the beaten path for us here at Having a Drink with Mink. But uh, nonetheless, you know, we hope to diversify, keep things interesting for you and I. You bet. For all that, I may have gotten a little bit of sunstroke. <laughs> so bear with me as I ramble. We do have a couple comic books to show you this week. And I wanted to point this one out specifically. Um, got this uh, two weeks ago going on now. This is a free comic book day comic. It's the Fabulous Furry Freak Brothers. And you're saying to yourself, the Freak Brothers as a free comic book day comic? Yeah, it was pretty weird to see it sitting there amongst all the Disney and Marvel uh, fare. And, um, you know, what's especially weird is the rated T for teens. When I was young, you had to go into the sketchy part of town to get these comics. Yes, you did. You know, you go into the head shop, through that beaded curtain, past the incense and, uh, you know, the glass counter full of, what were they, plumbing supplies? <laughs> to the rack at the back of the store. And I gotta say, Gilbert Shelton and company provided a lot of entertainment, both then and now, unless you think that this is some toothless reprint, you know, which doesn't feature the lads at their decadent best, well, you'd be wrong. There's all the dope smoking, rock and roll, and rip-offs, you know, that uh, you've come to expect from the Freak Brothers. And I was absolutely delighted to see this, a story which I hadn't read since the 1980s. And uh, this brings the boys up until that uh, punk period, you know, late 70s, early 80s. And uh, this is when that movement was a thing, and they decide they want to get in on it. And uh, being freaks, well, they dress like this. And I gotta say, pretty sure I sat in with those guys for a while. Stick around to the end of the video, we'll check that out. Um, now in print, Fantagraphics is pleased to present more freaky fun. And you can get the early stories, the uh, graphic novel, as well as some of the more off-the-wall stuff. That's right, Fantagraphics has you covered. Okay, speaking of reprints, that's pretty much what a lot of this box is. Now, if you were lucky back in the 1980s, if you were in the right place at the right time, then you may have gotten yourself a copy of Mr. Monster's High Shock Schlock. This was brought to us by Eclipse. This is issue number two, and uh, gleefully narrated by Michael T. Gilbert's Mr. Monster. These are those controversial 1950s tales that had long been repressed. What's so controversial? I don't know. I don't see anything wrong with Tony Gay. The new gymnasium classes looked like fun to Tony Gay until she realized that there was no royal road to perfect posture. Check out Butch Dykeman here, yucking it up. Well, at least until the uh, gym coach catches him. I don't think he'll be laughing for a while. In fact, I think he'll be sitting with a cushion. And then it's Jumpin' Jupiter. And this is Basil Wolverton, in color no less. Now, a lot of these 1980s reprints had the Basil Wolverton stories in black and white, and, well, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. No, sir. Uh, Frank Thomas, The Eye Sees, that starts off in black and white, and then it turns pink before graduating to a full-color strip. But this is uh, all about the enigmatic orb encountering some uh, criminal activity. And he propositions this gal, and she answers, Would I? And then, speaking of the 1980s, uh, 
Here's a team that was very popular back then, unless you're reading that and uh, not seeing this little bit right here. It's pronounced Smen. That's one syllable. This is a one-shot parody issue, and uh, it features a not-so-lovable team of mutants, and uh, we take a look at their adventures already in progress here in the Rumpus Room. This is a uh, fun little spoof on that Marvel property that was uh, pretty much everywhere at the time, got to admit. I was a little burnt out on it, and I didn't even read it. But uh, a lot of in-jokes, a lot of gags, and then a guest appearance by no less than Cerebrus. Or is it Cerebus? Let me know in the comment section below. But what can I say when I find stuff like that in the dollar bin? I have to pick it up. Now, talking reprints, uh, East Coast Comics was offering them a decade before Eclipse or any of those other companies. They brought us these uh, EC classics in the form of Two-Fisted Tales. Every month, uh, East Coast Comics would reprint a different EC title. And so this is number 34, and it features war stories and some westerns. Check out this ornery varmint. He looks like bad news, that's right. That's some Jack Davis artwork in Betsy. And a uh, aforementioned varmint heads into town. He makes a bunch of trouble. And it's up to this old codger and dear old Betsy to work things out. And then dear old Wally Wood goes medieval on your ass with trial by arms. And these books were absolute winners back in the day because... Uh, you know, in the 1970s, those EC comics held a hefty price tag. They hadn't been repeated a bunch of times, you know, reprinted in every which way. You couldn't read the scans online. You know, you had to get them in print. And a dollar might seem a little steep for a comic book back then, but, uh, well, you get what you pay for. No ads. All right, talking reprints. And here's Bill Black, and he was pretty much a master of reprinting material. Uh, Golden Age Greats was a book that he brought us, and this one features those fighting females. As seen here on the back, who are they? Let us know in the comments section below. No prizes, but, you know, you'll feel good about yourself nonetheless, just for knowing. And then this features the Phantom Lady, Miss Mask. Mista of the Moon and Lorna, Jungle Queen. Not only do you get stories, actual reprints, but then little featurettes as well. Here's the darling of comics since 1941, talking all about the black cat here. Very informative. And this is the kind of stuff that um, has gotten rarer. You think that with the internet, you'd be able to find this stuff fairly easily, but... Most of the time, the Internet's just, you know, a guy knocking at your door trying to sell you something you don't want. Am I right, folks? And get out of my yard. No, you can't have your Frisbee back. Here's the breathtaking blonde phantom. And uh, who was she? Well, let me tell you. She traveled in uh, pretty good company. In fact, here she is with no less than Captain America, Human Torch, and the Submariner. Who seems to have brought a gift. All right, Namor. Way to woo the ladies. And then here's Jeffrey Jones, Raven and Rainbows. And this is from Pacific Comics. It's for the new era in comics. The new reader like you. Jeffrey Jones. Fantastic artist. A little on the macabre side, if you like that sort of thing. Very moody, enigmatic artwork. Bit on the sexy side as well. Curvy ladies, and, uh, well, who doesn't appreciate that? And some of these stories are absolutely bittersweet as well, including this one, which stayed with me long after reading it. It's Bias. Poor Sandy Duncan. And then, talking about those 80s black and white comics, you know, occasionally you'll be digging through the dollar bin, and you'll see something like this, and you'll say, Yeah. Yeah, what's coming home with me? 
I got to admit, uh, I wasn't really paying attention when Gaddafi was uh, doing his thing, but uh, Daffy Gaddafi, Malice in Wonderland, well, that's a book that uh, I should probably take a look at. You know, it doesn't necessarily have the best artwork, but it is a very stream of consciousness kind of adventure with uh, some very questionable imagery. Certainly glad to have it for the archives. And speaking of the archives, uh, sometimes you just buy a book because you've never seen it before and you want to preserve it. This is the saga of Thane of Hogarth. Where are my Thane of Hogarth fans at? Hello? All right. Well, this has been having a drink with me. Goes outside. Then comes back inside. Can't stay out there all the time. No, sir. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, once again, t-shirts are available. Get yourself a t-shirt just in time for summer. The link below. You betcha. Don't want to miss out on any of that stuff. From all of us, all of you, thank you for joining us, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Going downtown, gonna get a jug of brandy, gonna give it all to Mandy, keep her good and drunk and doozy all the time, time, time. Good and drunk and doozy all the time. Keep her good and drunk and doozy all the time, time, time. Keep her good and drunk and doozy all the time. Oh, wow, wow.
Woody Guthrie and us, ladies and gentlemen. Now...